Hello, welcome back to the channel. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, you can find me on the M25 at 5 to 3. Um, oh, it's nearly the end of November, so this is going soon. My base is at £25. Um, we're going to pick up a Volkswagen, which you probably guess from the title, Volkswagen uh, Corrado 60 valve, black one, K reg, 1992. Um, did a bit of, um, the brakes on a trade up started to fall apart, so yesterday did all new shoes, uh, adjusted them, got them all working pretty nicely. Uh, new uh, put new winter tyres on the front of the van this morning. So, uh, all the uh, oh, put new LED side marker lights on the trailer and red reflective triangles which you didn't have previously. So, if Moza do come get in for us, um, which they might possibly do, Leatherhead is man pretty much not every day but 24 hours a day. Um, and they love a car transport uh, or something with a trailer, they do really get it from. Seem to ignore all the massively overloaded sprinters, not very really sprinters. Um, yeah, so it's probably going to be a bit dark uh, by the time we get the trailer loaded. It's 3 o'clock now and it's starting to. I'm going to take my sunglasses off. Uh, it's starting to get a bit dingy. So, how much you're going to be able to see of the loaded procedure, I don't know. But it's quite a nice car, it's only cheap. Um, I said in the last video, which I've just realised they haven't put out yet, that uh, hopefully we're going to move towards buying things with MLTs. And this has got an MLT. It's on May next year. It's coming to the end of November. So, the van's running pretty nice. We've been averaging 28.2 miles per gallon at 47 miles per hour. Uh, 47 miles per hour. So we've had a storming run all the way down here. Um, yeah, we're going to nip into the airport and drop something off. There's been a comparative lack of idiots on the M25, but lane discipline is a bit less of a concern when you've got a trailer on. You can't go in the fast lane anyway. But yeah, we'll. Um, Show you a bit more shortly. And we're back. So we've just done our little job at the airport. This is obviously the grottier side of the airport. This is where the dirty water is dealt with. We'll have a proper look at this at some point where I actually do for a job. So yeah, we've done that. Um, that's about the best position I could get the van in without reversing off the main road, which I didn't want to do. So I might just have to drive over the grass a little bit but it'll be fine we're rocking all right lock this door with a new fancy key and away we go hello yeah like i'm cutting through horsham to where this car is which didn't look too bad but it turns out it's pretty good locked it is five past four thought it was going to be able to sneak through before the worst of the traffic I think Horsham's just got bad track of it all the time. Um, but, again, we're having a relatively low digger day. Um, people have let me change lanes, flash me in, it's just unheard of around here. Um, this is a different way to the way I went to look at the car the other night, um, which was a lot of lanes, so I'm hoping this is going to be less lanes because now not only, in, not only am I in a big van, I've also got a trailer on the back. Um, all right, we've got a couple of it. The left hand lane on the dual carriageway is quicker, and now we've got people who've driven right to the end and they're now trying to change lanes. 
Oh, let him go. Don't see him hitting a courser. Oh no, the BM. Oh, the Toyota Rav4 actually is just changing lanes on the roundabout. No, he's not. He's just going right the way around the outside of the roundabout. That's particularly impressive bad driving. So, yeah, all right, then I'll take that back. There are some idiots about, but there are also a smattering of nice people who are doing their best to help out. Um, that's why it's queuing, just because there's a two-lane roundabout, which makes it a bit difficult to pull on to. Right, go, 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 go. I'm not going to go. Come on in, you KA. Closer a little bit at a time. It is going to be dark by the time we get there. So, what you'll be able to see, I don't know, but good luck, everybody. She's on, she's gone. Four straps, keep the boys on recovery city at me. Not particularly brilliant strapping. Oh, that's not very good. I'm gonna redo that strap. That one's all right. I'm gonna stop in the garage after a couple of miles and check we're all, all good. I think we are. Well, it's good enough to do what we're gonna do. Right. Let's hit the road, Jack. Here we 
late because it's quite dark and the street lights are not really helping. Got my sexy. Right. Shut up. Uh, got my sexy luminous vest on. Um, honest disclosure here, I have made a bit of a planning error, unfortunately. And when I went to look at this car last week, I started it, but it wasn't in two or tax, so I didn't drive it. The first time I drove it was to get in to move it onto the trailer. And it turns out I, I'm 6'2. It turns out I don't fit in a car, though. My head is jammed right against the headlining. Now, I just spoke to two of my mates and they were like, oh, you have to stop and see if we can adjust the seat anyway. Um, I drive, because I had problems with my back, I drive in a bit of a funny position. I tend to drive with the, the back of the seat quite upright. Um, I can't really drive with it. I, like, I'd probably fit if I recline the driver's seat loads, but my back can't do that. Um, so, yeah, I might... It, it, every day's a school day. I should really have sat in this pre-purchase. Um, by the time I realised, I'd already paid for it and everything, and it's... Well, I put a deposit on it last week, so... I'm kind of committed. You can't just go back and go, well, I don't fit, so I don't want it. Um, so, yeah, I... Bugger. So, I'm... I'm not going to stop. It's on the trailer. I'm halfway home. Well, not halfway home. I'm some of the wheel. Um, I'm not going to stop and try it. I'm going to try it in the morning so I can be in a bad mood tomorrow rather than all the way home. Um, but yeah, it's a lesson there. I never had a problem really fitting in a car before. I fit in all my dad's classic E ones. Fit in a flipping classic Mini for God's sake. That's tiny. Um, Fit in, fit in a Calibra, which I would have thought about the same. It's a little coupe, car based coupe thing, but uh, yeah. So we, we might mark this down as a complete non success, and also why Mark II Golfs are worth more than Corrado's. Because um, more people fit now. So yeah, bugger. Uh, we'll. we'll show you more when we stop and we like to have a bit of a chat, uh, strap check. I'll speak to you in a bit. It's the morning after the night before. Um, I literally parked it here last night and uh, changed it to the van and went to bed pretty much. Done the usual YouTube thing and looking through the videos I filmed yesterday. There's a bit of a kink in that door. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not bad. Um, I now have a confession. The reason I got this cheap is when it's hot, it's got a misfire. And he's already changed a lot of stuff. I got the folder there. He's changed a lot of things and it's still there apparently. No, also apparently in the boot there's a new knock sensor, which he thought it might have been, but didn't go around again fitted. So we're gonna let it warm up and ask some people and see where we go from there. So you know that is concerning. I hadn't noticed that. That kind of means it's been on the track. Uh, 
Uh, Clark, that one fog light is set at hip. Oh, yeah, and the as well. Oh, no. Ah, never mind. It's what it is. Oh, I need a headlight, too. Here's what it is. I like it. Still haven't checked whether they actually fit in it, so we'll see. So, yeah, locks off. Get up the workshop. Show you more in a little bit. Hello again. So, car's finally made it to the workshop. Uh, just gonna pull it off, put it on the ramp, and see what we can see. Front wheel looks a bit funny. Other front wheel looks a bit funny. And they just run negative on the front. Or oh, they've been adjusted to put a bit of negative on. Okay, I'll try a cold start. Okay, so we're panicking last night. There is actually height adjustment on the seat, which now means I've got about two inches. One, there we go. Oh, that's a bit better. Uh, keys, which I'll just add in my hand. Engine sounds perfect. Right, I'm going to have to put my phone Sounds pretty good. It's a little rattly rattly from somewhere. Sounds like a bearing on a something. But the actual engine. Sounds lovely. Okay, we're still happy. Just a little tiny rattle. But it's a 92, 27 year old car. And it's the 2 litre 16 valve. Yeah, apparently the misfire happens. When it gets to 80 degrees, and not even started building yet. Okay, the distributor cap does not look brilliant, but 
What's going on with that? I'm not entirely sure it should do that. Um, get the rotor arm off and see what that's like. But I think I'll order two of those bits. Coil looks new. If different to all the ones I found on eBay. The ones I found on eBay are more like a box. That looks like a standard coil. Um, and he said the coil was new. And it's not a make I've heard of. Top run. It's upside down. Uh, so I'm going to vacuum cleaner in tomorrow. Clear all these leaves and crap out of it. And let's see where we are from there. I don't want to run it in here today because things and stuff and there's people in the next door. Obviously being a diligent buyer. Oh bloody hell. Ah, but I am. I looked in here before I bought it. Honest. It's got a vague smell of antifreeze so take that. Yeah, so get that rotor arm off, get a new distributor cap, and see where we go from there. Like I've been told to miss, why right? I haven't seen it myself yet, because I'm running for long enough. Hmm, I don't know if it's going to focus on it. Distributor arm, or oh, rotor arm, has a crack in it, which is alongside the contact. Actual electronic parts don't look bad. I don't think that should do that. Right, I'm gonna go and order them. And <clears throat> see if that makes any difference. Spoiler works, sunroof works. We're okay so far. Right, so we'll go from front to back. Um, brakes are rusty and feel a little bit stuck on, but not ridiculously bad. Uh, no, well, that doesn't look very good. Really, the support panel's not brilliant then. Okay. Well, no, it's not the radiator. This is the oh no, this is the cross member. So yeah, that is probably the radiator support panel. Let's see if we can get them. Um, this CV gate is gone. You see, it's ripped in. There's a bit of grease around the area. Uh, other gate. That anti roll bar link is touching the gate up, but it's on full droop at the moment. That one is as well. I'm assuming when it's back with the weight up on the car. You got a slight leak from the sump. Uh, 
as per what the guy bought it off told me. It's got a new catalytic converter and a new lambda sensor, which someone's fitted with a bit of heat resistant thing. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Uh, center boxes. Cross, got a lot of silences this car. So you've got cat, center silencer, middle silencer, rear silencer. Center silence is new. This one doesn't look too bad. Uh, see that one's just about to start <laughs> popping in the middle where it's double layer. Across the back. That's just under sealy sealanty stuff. Looks all pretty sound. Uh, fuel tank straps are rusty, but basically okay. Rears spin a lot better than the fronts. Discs. Mm. No, there's no, no, there's a little lip on them. They're not ridiculous. That one. Yeah, it's okay. Again. Oh, that's got a bit of a lip on it. Um, sills. Sorry, I'm going front to back to middle. Sills are okay. So bodywork wise, jacket plates are good because obviously you've got the car on them. We're not looking too bad. Uh, fuel lines are all plastic on these. This ooh, got a little bit of a leak from this accumulator boxy pipe thing. Which I previously replaced on the Golf, and it feels like this cable tied on, but it is a different design to the Golf. And also, what's that bit? I don't know what that is. Uh, low proportion valve. Was there? Um, maybe do with new flexibles on the back, but the actual brake pipes look fine. Uh, bushes look okay on the rear cross member, uh, rear beam. Track but ends aren't new, but Like it. Yeah, no, other than this being a bit worse, obviously someone's welded a patch in it there. Which, uh, so that panel, oh, it's a bolt on, it goes underneath the front cross member. So if that's available, what's this here then? It's just a pipe that goes in and back out again. So it's some sort of rudimentary. Uh, Oil cooler. Oh, it's got two tow nice. Interesting. Front duvet is cracked. Worse on this side. It's also got some self tightening screws holding it together. That can be probably plastic welded. Bumper's a bit loose, but. That's kind of how they are. This side loose. No, okay, maybe it's not how they are. Wiring. I don't know if this is how they are or this is in reference to the fact they've had this problem with it. But it all seems to be with no insulation on whatsoever. Is that a piece of wood? Why? Why is there a piece of wood?
It looks like wood. On the end, you can see the end grain. What does that actually do? It's just a shield that goes around the dry shaft. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's not. Don't know. Uh, Steering rack gaiters are okay. Rear bushes got a little bit of perishing, but they're not too bad. Same on that side. Shocks are leaking on the front or the. Oh, that one does say 1996 on it. That one looks like it's been replaced. Okay. So, there's no immediate cause for concern other than the fact it's probably been on the track. Um, it's got Pirelli P6000s on, which are, oh, actually, 13th week of 2015, so they're four years old, which is not oh, mud and snow, but yeah, 13th of 15. Uh, these are Rapid Pro. Oh no. Oh, hang on, I'm being stupid. The P606, they're not Pirelli's. The Rapids. P609's. Okay, but they are a match set and they're within. It's the week then, the year, isn't it? So they're within a week of each other. Yeah, 13, 15. Okay, that ain't too bad. So, right, they might be rubbish make. And for some reason, mud and snow. I think that's what M&S stands for. Not Mark Suspensers. Needs, needs paint, really. If I had a coat of paint on this, it would be a pretty nice car. Uh, if you took it to a car show, I'm sure you've all done it, where people come up and tell you everything that's wrong with your car. Coat of paint on this. Refurb the wheels, because they're bogging. They assume they're standard. Um, but there's a very good powder coat guy now who's got an acid tank, which dips them, removes everything, including the inside, so you don't get any <coughs> corrosion problems underneath the tyres, and coat the inside, so I'd have those re redone in. Uh, like silver or gr yeah standard silver so yeah overall we are pretty happy so I'll try and reproduce this uh, misfire thing see if we can work out what it is and go from there yeah interior is nice can do the cold paint but overall, yeah, pretty good. Okie dokie dokie. So, as we said, we found a crack in this distributor arm, rotor arm. See there? New one is different but we think the same uh, dimension from the center point to the outer of the rotor arm is the same it seems to be a thinner material <coughs> that's an intermotor one and what i think had happened as well is rust had built up on this shaft so when they pushed it on because <coughs> it was a nightmare to get off it had cracked so i cleaned all that off with some uh plastic wire wool stuff and some sandpaper so now the old one uh, where's that? Slides on easily ish. So, we're going to put the new one on, change the distributor cap, and see where we go from there. Nice. Alright, new rotor arm and distributor cap is installed. 
obviously marked the wires to make sure they're in the same order. Hopefully that they're in the same order. Possibly in the same order. So let's see if it starts first. Which it does. Right, so right so. Right, so um I'm gonna move this outside, leave it running, lock the gates obviously, so it doesn't go bump in the night. Got something else to do quickly. Get on with that and see how it settles down. See if it comes up the temperature and how's that? And doesn't start missing. So move that. Oh, I'm gonna pump the tires up as well. I'm not going to pump the tires up, I'm not driving down the road and sort of any shoe or anything okay. There, pull your arms out, get it outside. Alright, what I was told was when it's 80 degrees, it starts missing. Well, it's 75. Uh, if it does, it was warm. Not really. It's probably another five minutes. It's a bit concerning because someone's got a massive fire around here today, so it stinks like, well, like this car's on fire. But I don't think it is. I have a fire extinguisher ready. So yeah, we'll see. I don't know what they're burning, but it's bonking. We'll see what, uh, what happens when it reaches 80. Okay, it just, well, it's nearly, nearly, nearly on 80. I'm not going to straight on, it's probably on it's like 79. It looks further away in real life than it does on the camera. And just before it got to it, the engine not changed. I'm missing yet, so we'll run it till the, um, till the fan kicks in. If the fan kicks in, it's not missing. I'm going to take that. Right, get this thing off a little. We're getting nearer to the danger zone and it is doing something strange. Just kind of slightly revving on its own. Not doing it now. So we're above 80. Right, there's a good bit of heat coming off everything. See that there? I just revved on its own. Fan. There's a fan. Right, I think what it is is the fan kicking in and out. That's what's changing the engine. Oh, it would be better if I wasn't touching the fan. Ooh. Right, I need to put a cable tie on that. And also not get my fingers caught in the fan. So it appears like the radiator's held on with a cable tie on this side and a bolt on that side. So I really don't want to start um, what's the Pulp Fiction expression which I can't see on YouTube because it will be censored starts helping each other to enjoy yourselves and it's it's only we'll say now if the fans coming in the fans stopped again now I think the change in engine all right not just to dark on its own and the fans not turning Did it again. All right, so it's doing something slightly strange. I don't know why I'd do that. That is tight on there. 
That's tight. In the pier to be any splits. Oh no. No, it's doing it. Ah, well that's frustrating. So yeah, it is above 80 now, exactly like they said. And it's starting to miss. It's not really missing, it's just not running as smoothly as it was. And it was when I touched this. I feel like there's a split in it. And it's not doing it now. Fans in now. Hmm. Interesting. So it's been running for, I should have took note this when I started it running, in 20 minutes. And fan's kicking in and out, see it's heading, temperature gets heading up a bit now. Um, hmm. This is very strange. See, what's that? Right, that's taped up. That's a temperature sensor. It doesn't go to anything, it's on a bracket. Why would it be on a bracket? Right, we need to have a, a little looky looky. Need some NGB wiring diagrams. Um I'm gonna get this van off the lift and then try We've got a short section of private road here on this estate. So try driving. It could be that this misfire comes more apparent under load. But it's not. Cleared now. Mm -hmm. Great, so it's an intermittent. intermittent possible problem. And also occasionally it'll just rev itself a little bit. Mm. So close the bonnet now in case it's a heat build up thing. Clutch is quite near the bottom but it's not. are not brilliant. Well, that didn't sound like it was missing to me. There must be something going on with the idle control valve with this minor blippage in. Is that missing? It's popping. Yeah, that wasn't me. Got an exhaust leak somewhere. Let's give that another go. 
think, I think that's going to be the end of this video and tentatively we're going to call it a success I just gave it a little bit of a tiny little run and gave it the full berries in first and well not the full berries but I gave it a little punt in first and second pulled through fine um, yeah I think we're, we're going to take that so now it's the next stage is decide what we're going to do with it uh, like I say, you could do with a coat of paint really to make it and the wheels refurbed. Bad luck, I can get Uniroyal Uni Rainsport 5s they're up to now. But you can get a set from Demon Tweaks delivered for 168 quid. Um, which would be nice. So, I'm going to take it to this paint shop, see what they put a full coat on it. If, it, if I take it to a. Like that tyre is flat as anything. See what they put a full full coat of paint on it if I take it to them fully stripped. So all they gotta do is prep it and I'm not gonna get into prepping it. They can do that. See if I can get a new lip without the cracking, even though I just hit it driving over that small bump there. And then um, a couple of little bits like the fog light and that panel that we showed underneath this in front of the radiator. Looks like a ducting panel. So ideally I'd like to get a new one because I don't want to start welding I look thin and horrible. But yeah, pretty happy really. Um, apart from when it does that. Special mention, the van was brilliant picking this up, did 25 to the gallon here and back. Kind of what you're looking for. So yeah, finish up and go and do a bit of editing. Take care, see you later. Post note, I might have spoke too soon. Oh dear. I did speak too soon. But we've got stuff like spark plugs to do. That's me having to do that. Okay. It's back alright again. Yeah, it's trying to drop off, look. Ah, oh, okay. So the idle's dropping. And it's correcting it and making it do a little blip. Do the multi-function. That one is it. Mass per gallon 1.8. Miles. Uh, temperature 112 degrees. Don't know if that's good or bad. Six degrees outside. I'm well happy all that works. I might go if I was a golf it wouldn't work. again all right so we'll take that back it wasn't a success there is something wrong with it but we are not defeated okay right next episode we'll try and fix the problem Corrado <laughs>